I'm Mike Lee Scardo, the head drone pilot for Beverly Hills Aerials, and welcome to my Hero 8 decasing tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a brand new Hero 8 and pretty much take it completely apart and get it to weigh about 35 grams, which is not as light as you can get it, but it's pretty good. Um, there'll probably be a part two video um, that will show you how to get it even lighter. But for the first video, I thought we would just do 35 grams, which is enough to be able to put it on a lot of really small drones and have a lot of fun with it um, and get some really awesome footage. The first thing I want to say is cautions. Be careful. Um, my warnings are is number one, it's dangerous um, physically to yourself. You can cut yourself, you can burn yourself. Um, you can hurt yourself in a lot of different ways. Um, so you need to be very careful and work really slowly while doing this. Um, if you're not comfortable with tools or working with heat guns um, or working with small circuit boards and solder points, um, this might not be for you. Um, if you are into that kind of stuff, uh, then the main dangers are your pocketbook because you may break your GoPro, you may break your GoPro, it may no longer record, you may only be able to refer to it as a Go and not a Pro anymore. If you catch my drift, um, it's really easy to have this go wrong. Um, I've done a lot of decasings now. I've done sixes, sevens, and eights, and I've broken almost all of them. Um, not always on my first go, sometimes even on my second or third go. Uh, it's really easy to make a mistake and just kind of tug in the wrong spot and, and break off something um, that you shouldn't have. Um, so you have to be really careful with doing that. So as long as you understand the risks, both of possibly never having your GoPro work again, and the other risk is of hurting yourself, um, let's move on. So if you're okay with that, <laughs> if I haven't scared you away with that, we will go on. Um, I'm gonna plan to do all three of these GoPros. Um, I guess kind of assembly line status. Um, so step one is just open the GoPro package. Okay. And now we got the GoPro here. And unscrew this guy. Now, while we're getting ready to dive into this stuff, a um, few more, no oh, tools you need. Uh, you're going to need, at least from what I can for sure tell you, and you, there may be better tools than what I'm using, but I'm using a really small uh, flathead. I'm using a really small Phillips, and I'm using a torque and a heat gun. And I think that's all you really need to get this done. So step one is going to be to remove this front fascia. Actually, I take that back. Step one is going to be to set up your camera. So to set it up, you're going to need a fully charged battery and a SD card. So I'm going to have to stop the video. I'm going to plug all this in. I'm going to link it to the phone that I'm recording with, which is why I can't show you I'm doing that, but it's super easy. So see you after I have set up my GoPro. All right, and we're back. So now we have updated all the GoPros. We have formatted the SD cards. We have linked them to our phone. Very important that it's all linked up to your phone, ready to go. And we have tested the GoPro individually one by one. Uh, which means putting in whatever setting you use the most, hitting record for 30 seconds, couple minutes, changing settings, hitting record, looking at the native colors, the Pro Tunes, and just making sure that everything's working right because uh, although it's not super common, um, I don't know, we go through our share of GoPros throughout the year and I'd say at least once or twice a GoPro out of the box does not work. And it's a shame if you take a brand new GoPro and go and use it on a professional shoot or spend several hours decasing it and then you find out that the GoPro never worked from the beginning um, would be a shame. So I have updated all these GoPros, tested them all, reviewed footage, um, 
you know that they're working, updated firmware uh, to the, either the firmware that you want or to the newest firmware. In this case, with the Hero 8, where we're all about the highest dip, bit depth uh, and bit rate and quality, uh, I updated it to the newest firmware that they have, which also now includes the media mod if you need a output on it, which is kind of cool. Um, okay, so to go right into it, um, I'm gonna try and make this video a little faster than most videos, as I feel like a lot of people drag on about things, and I will try and not do that to you, even though I'm doing it right now. Okay, step one, uh, pull this little crappy uh, battery port off. We're gonna take off this front face. Now, the most important thing about the front face uh, that you realize is that there is an obscene amount of glue right here over this L uh, um, LCD screen. And then there's like just a couple goblets around this part of it. Now we need to, in essence, rip off this whole front. Um, rip is a bad word. Maybe we use the word pry and gently lift, uh, massage. And for this, I like my flathead. And if you look here at the end, there's like a little hole. There's actually two little holes there. Um, I kind of play around in those holes and try and get just underneath there's like a plastic part. Now here's where you can really hurt yourself, guys, if you're using a screwdriver and you can slip and jam your hand and it sounds silly and dumb, but I've I've done it um, pretty badly before in the past. Um, so just be careful. And the key is just to kind of, once you find that spot, you can kind of hear it. I don't know if that, you heard that, but you can hear it and then just kind of pry it along. And this is very, gentle process once you kind of know where to you can put pressure it becomes easier At the beginning it's kind of trial and error i would say kind of put pressure on the edges and just keep in mind there's always weird electronic stuff like everywhere that you don't want to accidentally clip um, like ribbons and cables but this side over here is pretty safe it pops off actually pretty easy once you get it to about there um you can go a little just kind of I guess a good strategy is just kind of stick this in and give it a little wiggle all the way down. <laughs> and once you've kind of pried off that part, look, see how that comes out? So I don't know if you can see, I have it lifted there, there. There. Once you've kind of popped that part off, that's as much as you're going to get off without using a heat gun, in my experience. Um, actually, the time where I'm talking about where I hurt myself, um, I have decased a lot of sixes, sevens, uh, and it was my first eight. And uh, the sixes and sevens don't have as much glue here as the eight has, so I stress it like there's a lot of glue here and I was used to being able to just kind of pop it off easier. And I was actually using this big screwdriver, which is I don't use anymore because now I'm scared of it. And I slipped and I, sli I sliced open my hand so bad. Uh, it like almost went through my whole hand. I saw my whole drone pilot life career flash before my eyes. Um, it was pretty bad and I was in bandages for a week and I could barely fly and it was a terrible, terrible time. Uh, and it was right before this huge commercial for the Super Bowl. Uh, and I healed just barely in time. So, yeah, I don't want that to happen to anybody else. So be careful. Um, now, once we get this heat going, we're going to just kind of apply it right here. So this and just heat up everything real nice. It should get like hot to like where you don't really want to touch it, but not hot where you see that LCD screen starting to turn weird colors. Now, once you've heated this up, kind of go back in there. And now uh, this is the gentle part. You have to just kind of carefully apply pressure. Once you see like a little part lift, go in there with this little screwdriver. Come back in with this guy.
it's a very slow, boring process where you can really screw something up. So this is probably my least favorite part of this whole thing. And once you kind of get it a little bit, you can kind of pull it carefully around the edges. Remember that LCD screen is the money. Woo, baby. Cool. So once you got this guy off, he's pretty much worthless. Worthless. Um, and then so this is where we are now. Um, from here, you need to bring out your screwdriver. Sorry, not screwdriver, torque bit. And make sure it's the proper size that fits in this. My bit is pretty old, so I have to be extra careful not to strip one of these screws because if you strip one, it's not gonna be a good day. And there's six screws. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now. I'll just from straight top. So put a lot of pressure. Make sure that it's gripping before you turn so you don't strip. I don't even know how you would get this out safely if you did strip one of these. So one screw. Each one is like a victory because, trust me, I've messed up enough of these. Every little screw comes out. I am excited. One step closer. Okay. Well, well, I'm going to take off all five of these screws and not bore you on camera. And then... I'm gonna skip the last one and I'll come back on camera, but that way I don't make the video super long. All right guys, and we're back. And as I was talking about it, of course I stripped a couple of those screws. Never done that before. I think my, you need like a really new fresh uh, screwdriver because I guess they strip easily. Um, so I had to drill it out very carefully. I don't think I went into anything that I shouldn't, but I'll, Double check first time drilling them out. So if you strip them, you can drill them out. We'll find out soon. Um, so I removed all of them except for this corner screw, which is the trickiest one to get to. And my best solution at the moment is to grab a flathead screwdriver, our old trusty, and kind of just stick it in there, right in, right in between the two plastic parts. You can see I go there um, and you just kind of pry it. There's four screws holding it in. And from what I can figure out, the only way to get in here is to break it open. So. Um, yeah, man, I kind of, kind of wish I could leave it somehow, but I don't know how you get in there. Maybe cutting that? Because the problem is no torque fits in here unless you go really carefully. You need like a, a right angle torque. No, I'm gonna strip it if I try and do that. So. I'm just gonna stick to my original plan, which was pry it open with the flathead, which I lost now. Where did it go? Okay, so pry it open. Okay, 
Come on. Come on, little guy. There you go. Okay, once you get in there. Ha, okay. Once you're in there, it comes off a lot easier eventually. <laughs> Now this comes off and reveals your lens and the final screw, which is right there. Now let's, let's see if I can not strip this screw. Oh, come on. No, don't do that to me. I think. Ah, okay. We're turning success. Okay. Oh, God, so close. Okay, we did it. Now, once you get all those screws out, the last thing you gotta do, there are four screws under here. Very important, you pull those off. So I'm gonna pull those off and cut and I will be right back. Okay, so once you remove those four screws on the bottom, this piece will come out. Now this will allow you to, the thumb part, can literally just pry the edges and it should, oh, like an accordion, come out. Now you don't want to just yank, oh, that was kind of hard. <laughs> um, you want to just slowly pull it out like an accordion, um, really just enough so it's like that. And then you can see all the madness and just kind of check everything out and look at every little part that you could break. Um, so what I would do next is inside here, you just screw. Wanna go for that guy? Phillips. And once that guy's out, now this battery plate inside is kind of glued to the, to the wall. So if you stick a screwdriver in and kind of push it, I don't know if you can see that, but kind of just push. You gotta kind of unglue. Oop, there you go. The back side of the of the battery plate is glued to the side with the LCD. So there's glue, or not glue, it's like a little strip of tape that's on the back of this LCD, and that's touching this metal part of the battery. So you're just trying to pull off the battery um, area, little metal battery container. Yep. And some stuff's already coming apart, which is okay. Um, actually, probably first, let's, so this is what we got inside. I would carefully pull apart, pull off the LCD. Actually, no, it's the buttons. So these two ribbons here, you can pull off. Show you. So this one already came off, which is fine. It almost always comes off right at the beginning. You just don't want to do it a lot of times. Now, this one next to it, I'm going to pull off too. Okay, so now, now we're inside. Um, the next 
thing I would pull off. See the, there's a red, green, blue and black cable connected to the board. I'd pull that off because that's for the battery. We're not gonna use that anyways. Carefully. Pull that guy out so that you can see now. Here's the battery one. Came out. Um, this black tape here can be just pulled off. Now, all we've got is one little, one thing left that's for one of the buttons, I believe. Um, now, we've still got that pesky battery plate here. So let's see if we can pull out, pull out this battery plate. And how are we gonna do it? So you can see. Uh, I'm not sure you can see what I'm doing here, but I'm pushing the inside of this. See how that battery is coming this way? Oh, there it goes. Look, so the battery is getting pushed this way off of that wall. And when you pull it off that wall, it will eventually come out. out now. Now we've got our torn apart GoPro here. Um, so here's where it gets not tricky but just get, stuff's getting smaller a little bit. Um, so first the record button which is still plugged in. I try and leave stuff plugged. If I don't have to unplug it ideally I take this whole thing apart without unplugging anything but those connectors, they're just so, so soft and so easy to break that if I can leave it plugged in, I'll leave it plugged in. Um, now for, I'm gonna try and switch the camera view so I can give you a better idea of what's happening next. Okay, so now we're inside this thing. Now, if you look here, this is the bolt from as far as I can tell. And um, that's the GPS unit. And here, bolt, bolt. So we're just gonna kind of pop those off. The GPS unit, I mean, we have no real need for, so um, we could even unplug it before or after, it doesn't really matter. But here you're gonna see how we try and softly pop the things inside off. So just probably, um, Pop, 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 pop. This is like the scariest part. Pop, all right. And here we go. This is the power button and the GPS. Um, next, same type of situation here, pop, pop. Pop. Up. And that is a very important part. That is the USB C. And then we've got all these cables here. And we're not going to need all of them. We're not going to need most of them, actually. That one was power. We definitely need that. These are feeding to it. So there's the microphone. Oh, sorry guys. Okay, so next, this is the power. And these are all the LCD stuff, which we don't need. Here's this little chip, I think, that goes through the battery. I'm um, just gonna keep popping, 
and lock in here. Oop. Definitely need that cable. That was the cable for the power. And then now we have the cable for the mode button. Here you'll see this is all this is the LCD plugins which if something goes wrong you're gonna have to plug these back in so try not destroy them And then this is the mode button on the side uh -huh, with a couple last screws. GoPro is very sneaky. This was definitely made so that you could not take it apart. Or so that you, it's not easy to take apart, I should say. Should be left with this and you are almost there so from here we've now removed the LCD front cover this little glass thing which I like to try and reuse and the battery so all this stuff has come off for some good weight savings. I think this this is all about 35 grams here, which I think is pretty good. Um, I'm probably gonna do another video afterwards, pulling this guy apart a little bit more, but honestly, I think that there's a lot of advantages to just leaving him like that if you're not putting him on a super tiny drone, um, which, um, which is pretty rare for me. I like to have as much power as I possibly can for the shot. Um, so, you know, if that means I can fly an X-Class, then I'll fly an X-Class. If that means, uh, you know, six or seven inches is the right tool, then I'll put it on that. But, you know, I don't go small unless I have to go small or for safety reasons. So I'd like to go as safe, um, as small and as safe, but also as big and as powerful. If that makes any sense. Maybe that was just confusing. But so there you have it, guys. Um, that is how you decase um, GoPro. And from here, you can put it back together. It's pretty much just plug and play and make it look as pretty as you can. And that's half half the fun. Everybody's got their own style of how they make things um, look at the end. But um, yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, share it. Um, I, I may be selling a few of these um, that are extra right now. So if you're interested, definitely shoot me an email. Um, Want to give thanks to all the guys who've helped me along the way. Definitely uh, Rimsler and Paul Park um, and a bunch of other guys. Uh, the FPB, FPB community is just so awesome and, and sharing and appreciative. And I love when everybody's positive and in the right direction.